All right, we are back. Last but certainly not least, certainly not least, Washington State head coach Cami Etheridge back for year number six. And the last time we were all together in Las Vegas, you were making some really, really good memories. I feel like we should have the band come in right now and play behind us. <laughs> a little Matuga, too. Yeah, but Cami, I just, I just got to ask you, we're going to ask about this year's team and everything that you've got building right now. But now that you've had some time to reflect back on what that run in Vegas and winning the Pac-12 tournament, what it did for your players, for your program, for you guys, what did it mean and, and how can it help propel you into the future? I'm not sure I can even answer that very well still. Um, you know, I think it just validates you. I think our team, you know, taking over a program that had never really won, the whole university hadn't won a, a, a Pac-12 championship as far as on the women's side. and. You know, it's it, it's a statement. It's it's um, it's it's get the right people in place, and anything can happen. And and clearly, our team just got on a roll, and uh, did. It, I just keep saying it was magical, and 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 just one step after another, and and uh, played really well. Played probably as good as we could play, and and got you know we're led by some really strong strong players. Charlie's had an amazing tournament. And now it just, I think, validates us in, in recruiting, validates us as a program that, you know, again, I don't know that we have the biggest budget of anyone in the league. We don't have the shiniest, sexiest stuff, but that doesn't, that doesn't come into factor when you step on the court and play. And, and our kids played, as, played better than anyone else, and we won a championship. What's it like to accomplish something that your entire university just, just is so excited about your community, your town, your whole section of your state just embraces you, just the people you heard from and, and just what, what did that all feel like afterwards? Well, it, it feels, you know, if you know Cougs, you, you understand that question and, and um, it's just a family. You feel it, um, you feel the support, you feel the, the, the love, the support in every single way and um, people reached out. We go all over the world recruiting, and we still see Cougs, and people know about that championship run and what our, our program's been doing. So, um, you know, just love Pullman, love the community, love that area of the country because they support the Cougs so well and, and embrace our program and our players. Um, and now we just need to see if we can run it back a little bit. Run it back. All right. Let's open it up for questions from the media. If you have a question, please raise your hand and we will bring you a microphone. Run it back. Run it back. Run it back. Run it back. Oh, sorry. Oh, this mic is on. Okay. Uh, Cindy Brunson, Pac-12 Networks. Cami, great to see you again. Had an opportunity to spend some time with you up in Pullman earlier this spring, and we had a chat, a roundtable, about women's basketball and how it's growing, particularly in Pullman. Season ticket sales are at a record pace. What is the driving force behind that? Well, winning, winning is, is a, I, and, and you know, I think everybody knows that in women's basketball, I think in, in athletics in general, you have to win to really get people in the stands. Um, other programs in the university have, have succeeded. You know, volleyball is killing it and, and selling out uh, bowler uh, gym. Um, you know, so it was time for us and, and we, I think getting a better crowd got stymied a little bit with, with COVID. When we got, finally got good, you know, no one wanted to come back to the gym. And, and so I think it's, this, is, this is crucial for us. We're coming off uh, uh, winning a championship um, and obviously have a great team coming back. And I think the, the expectation is high. And I think people wanting to be and wanting to watch this and wanting to be on board is really big. So we need more people in our stands. We need to make that a home court environment where people can't walk out of there with a win. Michelle on the right. Hi, Cammie. Michelle Smith from the next. What are the two or three things that'll be most different about this team from last year's team? Oh, good question. I don't know different. I think just, uh, again, I, you know, every year I've come up here and we've talked about we're still young. We're still young. We won last year and we're young. We have everybody back. We have everybody back. We have everybody back, but we're old now. We, we really are pretty <laughs> experienced, and, and they literally are kind of seniors in their last uh, run at it. So I just think seasoned, and um, I don't think anything should really surprise us. I think we're, we've got that experience in our senior class, and then I think we have some really, really impressive freshmen behind them. So I think more than anything, this team needs to be different in the sense that we need to have five and six people in, in double-digit scoring. We cannot 
rely on and just depend on Charlize carrying us completely or or Bella, those two in particular, we really need a, a, you know, I think the best teams across the country really get four, five, six people in double figures. And I think we have the um, the players and the the talent in the gym to be able to do that this year. Cammie, to, uh, Cindy? Cammie, to that point, who are the two or three players that we should keep an eye on on your roster that are gonna provide that extra scoring punch? Well, I mean, we went to uh, our, we took a European trip to Croatia and, and Greece, and Jenna Villa uh, from Arlington in, in Washington, over on the west side, uh, she led us in scoring um, by far. Um, has the ability to really shoot the ball, so she's someone that we really need to step in and and keep people honest. You know, keep us keep us one on one in the post and and make people have to extend out on us. Um, Eleonora Villa, another Villa, not twins. Uh, she's actually from, um, we call her LA, from uh, Italy. Really, really, really good guard. Um, can get to the rim, can shoot it. Uh, she's gonna be a really special player. Obviously a love, I, I, I think the depth in our team, I, everybody that's healthy right now is gonna really help us. I think we can go nine and 10 deep and uh, really solid across the board. So beyond the, the seniors that are well in place and you know about, um, I, I think our freshmen are going to step up and have, have great years for us. Coach, you mentioned the foreign tour, and you also, I mean, you had, you were doing a lot of traveling this summer. You coached the Team USA America Cup team and had a lot of Pac-12 players uh, from different teams that you got to coach, and Chance Gray was sitting up here on that seat earlier today and saying that she loved being able to be coached by you and learn from you. So what, what was that experience like and dynamic of being able to coach some of the players that you have to go against during the season? I think, in all honesty, she probably wants to poke my eyes out. <laughs> 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 um, you know, USA basketball is an amazing thing, and anytime you get called to do that, you, you want to help and you want to do your best. Um, I have so much respect for the players that showed up and trained and, and went into that environment. You know, again, we took a team that, that uh, we didn't have to qualify, we didn't have to do anything, so the, you know, everybody else there was trying to qualify for the Olympics, so we were really faced with that older experienced team that we were going against. I thought the, the team really responded and, you know, it's so hard, nine, 10 practices, try to get everybody on the same page and, and you know, take, you know, represent and, and kind of take on the roles that they're giving. That's a really hard place for great, great players and best players on their teams to do. Uh, so, so much respect for every one of those players that, that put on that jersey for us and really proud of the silver. I know that's not supposed to happen in USA basketball, but really thought the team responded well and, and, and bringing home that silver was a big thing for us. Kimmy, seven of your nine years that you've been a head coach, you have coached a ledger walker. Started with Crystal and Charlize now. Um, what's it gonna mean when you don't have a ledger walker? <laughs> Well, there's one more back there. Oh, let's talk. Like, we won't talk about that. But no, I don't think we can. But what, what, being part of that family almost at this point for for as much as you've been involved in their lives, what what are what is a ledger walker? Oh gosh. <laughs> I love class participation. Oh, there you go. Please put a muzzle on her when she comes up here. <laughs> um. Gosh, I mean, I, I loved it, talking about Charlize. They asked a question before, were any senior nights more special? And, you know, Crystal, having come from, followed us and did that whole thing, and you experienced the whole Ledger Walker, and you have so, you know, so many, so much affection and, and, and trust build up. Um, but I just feel like we're a part of her, their tribe. That's what, I, that's what I think of them. I think they're a, they're a tribe and, and you have to earn your spot. You're not, you don't get to just be a part of their tribe unless you, you know, you know earn it and, and are loyal and are trustworthy. And uh, I think we've been through it a lot and, and obviously really proud of who she is and that entire family. Um, they were born to be superstars and leaders and great human beings, and that's a credit to Elio and, and, and their, that fantastic mother, Leanne. I love that. And, and before we have Shirley's come up here, let's talk about that other very special player that you have that you brought with you to Las Vegas, Bella Maricatete. <laughs> <laughs> She's one of my personal favorites as well because the personality is as big as the play on the court. Um, when you think about her story and her growth and what she's done and then what you expect from her this year, what, what comes up? Well, just continued. I mean, um, again, 
we talked a lot about it. Like Bella has come so far, transformation in all parts of her life, um, academics. Um, she's leaving with a couple of degrees, um, you know. And and but what she's done on the court, her work ethic, her discipline, her sticking to structure, and her improvement. It happens. It happens when you commit to it. And she is so committed to being a great player. She wants to play professionally. I think she has a great. Her ceiling is still really, really high. So she's got a long way to go. And. And it's, it's really exciting to continue to coach her, and, and we need big things from her. We're counting on her to be great this year. I love it. All right, well, let's, let's bring them up, because I, right. I know that uh, Bella will have a few things to say, I imagine. But ladies, Go come Coops. on up. Cammie, thank you so much. Best of luck this season. We appreciate you. Thanks.